Hey now, boys and girls, it's Mr. Fountain again, here with another music lesson for kindergarten through second grade. Today, I'm going to read one of my favorite stories to you. The name of the story that I'm going to read is Giraffes Can't Dance. This story was written by Giles Andre and Guy Parker Reese. As you know, uh, Price T. Young is in the middle of a readathon, so I thought it would be appropriate for me to read one of my favorite stories during our music time uh, on the virtual side and make it happen. So sit back and enjoy the story. I'm going to read it to you, and maybe if you're participating in the readathon, you might be able to get some credit. I don't know. But anyway, let's go. Giraffes can't dance. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awful crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees. But when he tried to run around, he buckled in the knees. Now every year in Africa, they hold a jungle dance. Every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year when they arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was very, very bad. The ward heart started waltzing and the rhinos rock and rolled. The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps did a cha-cha that had a very Latin feel. Eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish real. Gerald slowly, Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor. But the lions saw him coming and soon began to roar. Hey, look, at clumsy Gerald, their animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. <clears throat> Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clock. So he crept from the dance floor and he started walking home. He never felt so sad before, so sad and so alone. Then he found a little clearing. He looked up at the sky the moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a cricket, <clears throat> who'd seen Gerald early on. But sometimes you're, sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swing grass and listen to the trees. 
To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was swishing round and round. Wow, he was getting in it, wasn't he? He threw his legs out sideways. He swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leaped into the air. Gerald felt so wonderful. His mouth was open wide. I'm dancing. Yes, I'm dancing. I am dancing, Gerald cried. Then one by one, each animal who had been at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. It must be a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we have ever seen. How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply whirled around and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and the stars above. We can all dance, he said, when we find the music that we love. The end. Thank you, young people, for sharing with me today. I hope you enjoyed the story and watch it again. And we'll see you next time real soon here at Price T. Young Elementary School Music Class. Holla!